for that because they, that then all roads are open. So I, when I told them that, look, you, we may have open fire if somebody comes, then at that time they would have needed written orders. How do I give written orders to eight places? So can you believe it? I gave eight orders in anticipation, in writing, that when you fire, I will take responsibility for it. It was a blind order I gave them. It was a relationship of trust. I signed it and I still remember the image I have. I signed it and I put it into the CRPF police officer's constable's pocket. I said, Mera order is in jail. You will not run away from there. If you have to kill someone, then you will kill someone. Because if you don't kill someone, then you will kill India again. So now they had the order in the pocket. They were not going to look for me and wait for me that Kiran Devi will come, then the order will come, then they will kill someone. In anticipation, eight orders, blank, establishing a communication, establishing a trust, it was all done. Next day, when the actual incident happened, those people broke the first cotton. They killed a driver, they burnt a bus, they killed another person, police opened fire in the first sector, those people who were dead, it was mayhem. It was total mayhem there. And all of them jumping with swords came to my sector. And again in that anticipation, I thought I'll focus on Rajput and I'll focus on Ashok Road because these are the two roads coming from Bangladesh. Other roads can be taken a chance with. So I positioned myself on Ashok Road, which was a road coming from Bangladesh. When I positioned myself there, I, uh, I was at the Rajput. The entire, I positioned myself at Rajput. You all see Rajput? So I positioned myself at Rajput and all this crowd came, came running and coming with the naked swords. And the moment they came, somebody told me that Kiran, your, uh, uh, they're all coming at their shock road and they're all run, getting run over. <coughs> your cotton is breaking. So I ran from my uh, Rajput. It is quite a, a run. So I ran from there to the Ashok road. And when I reached Ashok road, the cotton which I had made like that, which was a cotton like this, I found that the entire crowd from there was almost going to jump over my cotton. And these people were, and I said, fire! And then they fired, doom, doom, doom. The moment they fired, doom, 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 it fired in the air. They didn't fire straight. They fired, and suddenly with that crowd, and then as I, as I saw them trying to get over it, I jumped into the crowd. When I jumped into the crowd, this crowd also, this police officers, to protect me, also jumped into the crowd, and the entire crowd, we started to push back. And he started to lunch charge, he started to hit whatever. We got hit, we but 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 we took them out. And they probably thought that basically means that if I had not given a independent uh to them, they would not have even opened fire even in the air. At least by that they had they because every fire, every shot you fire, you're accountable for it. So they fired in the air and suddenly we found that we could now have a space of a distance and we could do a lucky charge, we could lock back, we could fire or even we could fire straight because now we're not fighting into somebody's stomach. We got the space to fire. Earlier we would have fired into people's stomach. We would have been held very, very uh, culpable. So we gained that space and now we reassembled and the policemen got the control back. Why I'm still here? Why I'm still here? This, that, then they told me, oh, Sadar Sari Mahan Se Aagya Kali Mahapad, Rajput Pe, Aur Talwari Lekhi. Ab meinne ek jaga ke bacha ni, ab meinne dousi jaga. Then I ran back to Rajput. When I ran back to Rajput, I saw that there were police officers and these, uh, these, uh, <coughs> these uh, individuals with these naked swords hitting at police officers like this. And the police officers were doing this and police officers were retreating. I don't know, but I just had this baton in my hand and that's the picture he narrated to you. When I swung in, I kept fighting back. They and I had a duel, they even hit my sword, my my uh, sword, my uh, my baton, my baton was only this much left. I had a long baton. I had only half baton in one picture, there's a photograph which is only half the baton. But the point is that I stood my ground. Because I realized that if I don't stand my ground, I rather engage them with me than engage them at the at the lack of people's congregation. So I kept engaging them, and my footwork was brilliant. Do you know why? Because I was a tennis champion of my time. <laughs> I realized I had stamina, I had footwork, I could do. You know, I could do this anything, anything I, I can still do it. So the point is, my footwork was better than theirs. And I could do this, and I could do this, and I could do this, and I could do this. It was tremendous.
government, it worked. But you know what? Behind me there were no police officers. They all ran away. <laughs> you know how it tells why when I, when I say there were no police officers? Because the photographs are saying that. When I look back and say, oh, there was nobody there. <laughs> and I continue to buy. The, the point is I'm smiling now, but then there was nothing called smile then. And it was total engagement. And believe me, I don't know how it worked. But it worked. That team, that team got contained till reinforcements came. So with the result, we got, and by the time the Samagam crowd, Samagam uh, police officers around had totally geared, and more police force came from the first sector to sector three. And more police force now, when they were telling me earlier, force security as was that, now the force came after I fought the battle with at the Ashok Road and after I fought the battle at the Rajput. And the battle was won. Next day I realized, and in the evening we had a post-mortem of the situation, as you know, accountability and the accountability revealed some people died somewhere and whose bullet? So they said, the SP, DCP both there, kiski bullet se prana admi mara? Kahin firing hui? Mani ka haan hui. Bole achha ki tumhari hai, Ashok Road mein koi admi mara hoga. So I said, mara hoga hai, kyunki marna hi chahiye tha, kyunki wo hali situation hai badi thi. So then I was even willing to take responsibility for anybody who may have died in my center. Luckily for me, they, next, next time, when they further identified the number of parents, etc., they found that that guy had died in the first sector. But the point again is, I never disputed even then at that time, that no one died, no one died, no one died. I was killed in the firing air, no one died, 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 no one died. After that, next day I found there were photographs and photographs in the papers. And the photographs were because the Raj was a school of journalists. I never realized that. The Raghu Rai was the major journalist sitting there. So, when the Bangla came all these journalists came on the Raj but watching the fun. <laughs> and while I'm fighting, they're watching the cricket. And those photographs went, went, went to the commissioner. Then I realized what had actually happened. <coughs> that there was really nobody behind me and that people were cowering like that. All this was then photographed. And then the special branch DCP uh, recommended me for a gallantry award at that time. And that's how I got a gallantry award, thanks to the photographs around. But that's a part. That's a part. I mean, that is clear. You suddenly do not give blank checks to people. You suddenly do not delegate overnight. You do not suddenly become a footwork light. You suddenly do not take on challenges. You grow into these, friends. You grow into these and you never know where your stamina will be tested. You never know where your courage will be tested. You never know when your trust and delegation power will benefit you. You never know when plain speaking, direct talk, communication will get you a gallantry award for your life. You know that gallantry award gives me air travel benefits so far, uh, railway benefits, I can travel the length and breadth of this country by, uh, by railway with, with, um, uh, with a partner all my life free. <laughs> I never know, knew that. Imagine such a small act to my mind today has given me a railway pass with a first class ticket with a friend, with a companion free. So, I say, what do you want to go? Let's go. Let's go. This is what happens, but the key French is you as youngsters. <coughs> Whatever you're doing today, if you continue to cultivate those qualities of leadership, they never leave you. They stay within you. They go with you. They become an integral part of you. And even if you tell them, hey, you are a lot of bad people, you are a lot of bad people. They are not a lot of bad people. They are a lot of bad people. It will wake you up and make you, the, make you stand out. Hey, I don't want to communicate. Keep it aside. You will never do. You will communicate because this is the way you nurture. Let me go to the second story. He talked about the Goa's Wari Bridge. It's very beautiful. Same thing happened in Zwari when I was supposed to do Goa. There's, I don't know how many of you got to Goa, but there's a bridge after you come from Vasco de Gama to, uh, to enter Goa. You create a beautiful 